Zach Williams may have heard on the radio is called Chain Break. <laughs>
while you're preparing for that, as you know, we have all this Sunday coming up and we need to be in prayer of what God would have you to give. I have been here 11 years and the number has gone higher every year. The families that are fed here and pastor has never turned away one person for a meal and it's probably going to be over 15,000 or 1,500 this year, but it doesn't matter because we have a God who can multiply Father in heaven, we love you so much. Jesus, you are so good. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory this morning. Bless the gift to the giver. Multiply this gift like you did the loaves and the fishes that will suffice the needs of this church. That living faith can continue to go out to the highways and the byways. Find the lost, backslid, the unchurched, to tell them that Jesus loves them and Jesus is Lord. We ask this all in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said,
Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. Wow, that was sweet. Powerful. You got another psalmist in the house. Wow. Amazing grace. Boy, I'm tired of talking already and I haven't even started preaching. Just too many announcements. Acts 19.11, Kyle. Now, this Sunday and next Sunday, I'll be talking about unusual, extraordinary miracles, like I said I was. Then coming November, that first Sunday in November, we're having communion to kick off this Thanksgiving uh, drive and the work we're about to undertake. We'll have the sign-ups and everything. I think we need communion to keep us in unity and to keep us empowered that we're doing this for Jesus Christ and nobody else. So it's going to be a great service, that first one in November, then Alm Sunday, the following one. All right. But these next two weeks, you're going to enjoy it. And uh, you're going to probably tell other people because they'll want to hear this, uh, about these unusual signs and wonders. Look at Acts 19.11, please, Kyle. Go ahead. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Special, I think another version says unusual miracles. Now, you might be saying, well, all miracles are special and unusual. No, not really. They're normal. They're to be the norm. We're to walk in the power of his might. Uh, walking with Jesus, he provides. You get miracles every day and don't even know it. You get up and you're vertical. That's a miracle for some people. You go to a job. That's a big miracle for a lot of people. He takes care of you in ways you don't even know. We have a miracle working, giving God. Amen. So here we see two things I want to share, two unusual miracles. You're going to love it. One is Peter's shadow. The second is Paul's handkerchief. I know what you're thinking. This is crazy. No, it's the word of God. I told you there would be extraordinary miracles. And unusual miracles in the Bible. So let's take a look at it. Acts 5, 12 through 16. It's a great portion of Scripture. Has a lot of truth and a lot of meaning for us in it. So let's take a look. Acts 5, 12 through 16. Go ahead, please. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them. But the people magnified them, and believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about under Jerusalem, bringing forth sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, 
And they were healed, every one. And they were healed, every one. Say every one. This is fabulous. Check this out. Let's go back uh, to verse 12. Or before we do, let me t- just set it up. This is verse, this is chapter 5 in the book of Acts. And, you know, the Holy Ghost came in chapter 1 and 2 and empowered them to do the work of, uh, of the kingdom. And uh, we need that empowerment, don't you know? And you have it as a believer in Jesus Christ. Do you all believe that the Spirit of Christ dwells in you? That's how you got saved. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. The power of God working in you. Don't you know your body is the temple of God where the Spirit of God dwells therein? The power of God is in you. And and if the church would understand that, and, and, and people would quit preaching things that discount the power of God and the miracle working power of God in us, we can see some mighty things happen. Mighty things happen. Here it says in chapter 3, or uh, yeah, chapter 3, the book of Acts, let me set it up for you how we get to this place in, in chapter 5. Peter and John go to the gate beautiful, which is right outside the temple. They go to their, they go to their pray. There's a cripple laying outside uh, the temple. As people pass by, he's crying out what? Alms. Alms for the poor. That's what they did. That's how they made their living. That's how they survived. And according to Old Testament law, the, the people that went to the temple were obligated to help and threw their pennies in or, or whatever to show an act of mercy. Many did it out of obligation, not mercy. How many know God likes it when you show mercy, not obligation? Yeah. So, uh, so they come, and this man's there, and he's crying out for alms. And, and Peter looks at him and says, look at me. And he said, silver and gold I have none, but what I have I will give unto you. Arise and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. And they reached down, grabbed his hand, lifted him up. His feet became whole. A miracle happened. And he went leaping and jumping and praising God. And the people around saw this, and they began glorifying God. We have seen nothing like this. Then we go to verse 4. What was the result of this beautiful miracle, this man being set free of his infirmity, being able to walk? They're arrested. They're arrested in chapter 4 and thrown into jail and threatened never to preach in the name of Jesus again and then beaten and released. So here they are beaten, threatened that they're going to die if they continue to preach the kingdom and they go back to their little church community and they all begin to pray. And they said, now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Verse 30, by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that miracles, signs, and wonders may be done by the holy name of thy holy child, Jesus. 31, and after they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, a visible manifestation of God. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And they spake the word of God with boldness. There's a manifestation of being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking the word of God with boldness. So what did they pray after being threatened? Come on, give us boldness to preach your word no matter what. And stretch forth your hand with signs, wonders, and miracles. And God surely did. Because in verse 5, we see Peter, a man filled with the Holy Spirit, overflowing with the anointing. He would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. And the scripture tells us, we're back in our scripture now, Rhonda, talking about Peter. Amen. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Many signs and wonders. Many miracles. By their hands. Fourteen. And and believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both men and women. People were getting saved because of the miracles they saw. Let me tell you something. When the miracles flow, uh, salvations flow. Souls are saved. That's right. 
Now, the miracle in itself doesn't save them. Faith in Jesus Christ saves them. But it's the miracles that gets their attention. What? It gets their attention. It opens their ears. I've always said miracles are like plows. Gary, check this out. Miracles, they're like a plow that plows up hardened ground so the seed can get in. Miracles are like a plow that plows up hardened hearts toward God in order for the preached word like seed gets in there to bring forth a harvest of their soul. It's great. And that's what was happening. People, multitudes were being saved, men and women. Hallelujah. Then the next verse tells us this. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets. And they're seeing the apostles do mighty things. Remember we read it. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul and by the hands of the apostles. Many miracles were happening. People were coming from all over. Bringing the sick, lining them up. And look, you know, you ever been to a parade where people are lined up on both sides, 10 or 15 deep? It's just packed. You can't even make your way to the front to see. They were bringing the sick on cots and, and couches and, 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 get, and laying them in the street. Insomuch that even the shadow of Peter falling on them, overshadowing them, would heal them. Because Peter couldn't get to everybody. Peter couldn't lay hands on everybody. It was so deep he couldn't even get through the crowd to get to the back ones to try to lay hands on them. So even the shadow that overshadowed the sick healed them. Because, well, it doesn't say that. Well, look at verse 16. I think it does. There came also a multitude. That was them, round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, them which were vexed with unclean spirits. They were healed, every one. You know, instead of Oral Roberts, well, I like him. You, you, you do what you want. He's with the Lord. I thought he was a great man of God. Started a university, Christian University. He was the one who went up in the tower and said, I'm not coming down until this thing's paid for. I like that. I would do the same thing. I don't have a tower. What a man of God. If you ever have a chance to go to YouTube, click on Oral Roberts. Look at some of his crusades. People getting healed, the word of God going forth. But he insisted on laying hands on every single one of them. Today, we have corporate praying for convenience. I don't want to say for convenience. I don't know. God works in mighty ways. But his, that his assistants would have to hold him up. He would sit on a chair up on the platform, and as people came by, he would lay hands on them, lay hands on them, lay hands on them in Jesus' name. And he would, became so weary because thousands were lined up. Thousands were lined up, sun up to sun down. And he'd be so weary, two assistants would hold him on his chair. He refused to quit. So everyone was prayed for. Many healings, many salvations. Do you all, have you ever heard of Oral Roberts? You haven't? Amen and amen. So here, Peter, as he walks by, most likely laying hands on some of uh, the people, Seeing mighty things happen as that power, as that anointing is released by the touch. And I'll get into that in just a minute. That the people even wanted the shadow of Peter falling on them, that they might be healed. I found out something about a person's shadow. May I share it just for real quick? In ancient times, they believed that a person's shadow was an extension of themselves an extension of themselves, that when someone's shadow fell on another person, it was as if that person was touching them. As if that person was there in the flesh touching them when a shadow came upon them. (sighs) 
so full of the Holy Spirit, Dwayne, so full of the Holy Ghost and the anointing that was released from him. God even used his shadow to heal people because it says that they were overshadowed by his shadow. Overshadowed. I thought, overshadowed. Where is that? Where is that? 14? 13? Where is it? Come on, Rhonda. He was, they were overshadowed. I started thinking about that. Hey, Gary, I've, I've heard something about an overshadowing miracle that happened way back in Luke chapter 1 when Gabriel's told Mary, you'll be overshadowed by the Almighty. You'll, be, you'll have that child. You'll conceive because the power of God will come on you. Luke chapter 1, 35, you can read it. Don't go there. Just leave it there. That the Holy Ghost would overshadow her. Could this have been a release of the Holy Ghost that overshadowed these sick people? And wherever that shadow touched, they were made whole. Just as Mary, as that overshadowing power came on her, and she conceived. Psalm 91.1. You can go there. Kyle, read it. You know it well. We're to remain under the shadow of the Almighty. Where there's protection and healing. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you get under the shadow, this was the shadow of God being projected off of Peter. And wherever it landed and whoever it touched were made whole, as if Paul himself was laying hands on him. A shadow. An overshadowing of the power of God. Yeah. It's the word of God, isn't it? I know some of you might think you know everything about God. Hello. I don't think we know this much. As we as he reveals himself to us, we learn more and more. Right, Kathy? One day, We'll see him face to face and know all things. Complete revelation. But right now, it's piecemeal. Yeah. What does the Bible say, Kyle? We look through a glass a darkly. Everything is not clear yet, but it will be. And we have the Word of God to guide us, the Holy Spirit to reveal to us. People were, look, people, multitudes of people were laid in the streets. Just crazy. As Peter walked by, there was an overshadowing of the Holy Ghost coming from within him. The Holy Ghost, the power of God within Peter, transferable to those shadows coming forth. God Almighty was overshadowing these precious people that needed healing, and they were healed. The Holy Ghost that was in Peter In, in Hebrews 6, 1 through 3, we see something. You all believe in impartation, to impart, to put into? Well, I believe, according to Scripture, that the power of God can be imparted. It can literally leave your body, the power that works in you, leave your body and touch somebody else and restore them, help them, break yokes, destroy burdens. The laying on of hands is a doctrine in the church that should be taught and is not taught. Shame on some people that don't do that because it's in the Bible and it's called a doctrine of the church. Now, a doctrine of the church is to be taught by the church. Am I right? 
doctrine meaning it's a teaching. Read. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith One, toward God. Two. So we'll be teaching the doctrine of faith toward God, faith, repentance. Go ahead. Of the doctrine of baptisms. We'll be teaching the doctrine of baptisms. There's more than one. You're thinking of water. There's two more. Come on. I don't have time. Go ahead. And of laying on hands. And the laying on of hands. Can you believe? And the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. So right in the middle of all this stuff is the doctrine of the laying on of hands. Of the church. So do you think it should be taught along with resurrection, along with faith, along with all? Do you think, Teresa, it should be taught? It's a doctrine of the church. Well, I challenge some of the teachers in this church to teach the laying on of hands. Whether it be men's Bible study, women's Bible study, Sunday night. I've done it Sunday morning. Doing it a little bit now because it's a doctrine. Laying on of hands. Show you some scriptures here. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. Go ahead, Kyle. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in according us. According to the power that worketh within you. God's power is in you, saints. I don't care what somebody else tells you. The word is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. God's power is in you. That's how you got saved. Regeneration is, is by the power of God. You're born again by the power of God. Salvation is by the power of God through faith in Jesus Christ. When the Holy Ghost comes in, power comes in. The Holy Ghost is the power of God, the anointing. And that can be released by the laying on of hands. That shadow was an extension of Peter's hands being laid on those people. An extraordinary miracle. Look at Luke 4.40. Go ahead, Kyle. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had been sick, had any sick with diverse diseases, brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And Jesus laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. That's the doctrine of laying on of hands. What was happening as Jesus laid his hands, that virtue that was in him was being released. We read about power leaving his body. Let me show you. Luke 6, 19. Luke 6, 19. Go ahead, Kyle. And the whole multitude sought to touch him. For there went virtue out of him and healed them all. What went out of him? Power, virtue went out of him. That was in him, went out of him. That virtue, that power is in you. By the laying on of hands, in faith, it can be released. God's power, imparted. There are five reasons to lay on of hands in the Bible, scriptural reasons. Ordinances. One of it is a laying on of hands for healing. It's an ordinance. Don't think it's strange when you see ministers laying out of hands. It's Bible. It's doctrine. Jesus did it. <laughs> Powerful. Effective. Virtue went out of him and healed them all. Mark 16, 17, and 18. Go ahead. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, 
and they shall recover. So what's the promise? In, ver in verse 17, it says what? These signs shall follow them that believe. It doesn't say they follow the apostles. It says that these signs will follow them that believe. Hey, do we have any them that believe here today? Then start looking behind you because there are signs and wonders and miracles following you. Stop trying to follow it. It's following you. Stop trying to chase every little move of God down thinking if you're there, something great is going to happen. Somebody says there's a cinnamon roll that looks like Jesus over here. Or, you know, you run over there because you want to grab it and put it on your face. Or there's, there's water uh, drink. Yeah, I heard this. There's water uh, that if you drink this guy's water for 10 bucks, it'll take care of all you. Now, come on, people. These signs and wonders will follow you as a believer. You as a believer. Every one of you. I wish the young people would know when they go to school that signs and wonders are following them, that they can lay hands on the sick at school and see him recover. And you, as adults, with your friends that are on the phone with you for an hour, or come over to your house and, and, and whine and cry, and I don't mean that in a negative way. Why don't you just say, hush, lay hands on them, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And let that power be released. And touch them and heal them. The Bible says he laid hands on every one of them. That struck a chord with me. I don't mind corporate praying. I do it from time to time. But I think Oral has it right, right from the Bible. He laid hands on every one of them, just like Jesus did. And he laid hands on them all. And there were multitudes. And it says, these signs shall follow you. In my name, they'll cast out devils. That's just not for a Catholic priest. And by the way, how dare Fox Network put that series on called Exorcist? How dare they? In Jesus' name, I rebuke that. Fox, who's supposed to be leaning to the right, they put this trash on. I hope it crashes and burns in Jesus' name. Yeah, you heard me, devil. Exorcist, really? We need our kids watching this on national TV? Well, then why don't you pray and do something about it? And these signs shall follow them that believe. That's us, folks. My name, they'll cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues in Jesus' name, 18. They shall handle poisonous serpents and drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. In other words, great protection. Don't go out and drink cyanide, okay? It's not what it's saying. That's testing God. Oh, gosh, people. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, folks, this is the word of God. And I choose to believe it, all of it. From the shadow to the handkerchief to the laying on of hands because it's in God's word. I really believe the overshadowing was the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. Laying on of hands, Jesus practiced it. It's a doctrine of the church, imparting God's power to another to heal them, to set them free. Now, we come to Acts 19, Paul's handkerchief. Here we go. Acts 19, 11, and 12, please. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were so brought... So who did the miracles? Through the hands of Paul. So we need someone to be a conduit. But who did the miracle? I want to make this straight. I don't want anybody going out of here. Huh? Who did the miracles? Amen. And he... And he did it through Paul, as he'll do it through you. And 12. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs, or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out of them. 
So that from the body of Paul. Now, other translations in IV, New American Standard, they all say, and Paul laid hands on these handkerchiefs. Same thing, from his body, laid hands, from his hands, from his body, hands are part of the body. Shh, don't, don't tell nobody. Shh. What are you looking at, Cherise? From the body of Paul went forth handkerchiefs. These handkerchiefs were taken to the sick, so full of the anointing that was in Paul, that was imparted from the power of God in Paul into these handkerchiefs. When they laid them upon the sick, they recovered. Laid them upon the demon-possessed, they were delivered. Is that what it says? Who did it? God, God's power, he chose to use the handkerchief of Paul. I find it amazing that the power of God can be contained or imparted into cloth, but every indication here says this, it came from his body, full of the anointing. And we see that. We see that we just read where virtue came from the body of Paul, uh, came from Jesus, he felt it released. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? Jesus said, who touched me? Because he felt power leave him, and all she did was touch the hem of his garment. Cloth. Cloth. Wow. So that's why the handkerchiefs, we've seen us use them many times, according to Acts 19. Laying hands on them, anointing them with oil, as these have been, and then given to people, either for their own use, to take home, or in a constant reminder of God's power, or taken to a sick friend in the hospital, pinned to their pillow, pinned to their blouse, Oh, I got a scripture I wanted to share. Somebody needs to go over and get uh, Jamie for a minute, please. Jamie Nixon, is she here? Come on up, Jamie. Thank you, sweetie. All right. Look at Mark 5. Uh, look at, excuse me. Look at Matthew 14, 34 to 36, please. Matthew 14, 34 through 36. Hold on just a sec. Go ahead. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. And 36. And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. The cloth. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Touch the cloth. Were made perfectly whole. It's not the cloth. It's God. It was the person in the cloth, wearing the cloth. <laughs> that the anointing poured out into. Jamie, where'd you go? Jamie? I didn't hear a trumpet. Oh, here you are. I'm just kidding you. I knew, I knew you were there. Felt your shadow. There. Listen. She has a powerful testimony. Listen. Listen. I have lots of children. One of my sons, several years ago when he was 12 years old, had a stroke. And the week prior to that happening, we had a service, I don't even remember now, but they were handing out these handkerchiefs. And for whatever reason, you know, I know it was God, asked me to come get one, so we got one. Carried it around for a week, sat in my bedroom, didn't really think much of it. And then a week goes by. And that Sunday after church, there's a function here. He thought he had gotten dehydrated. He lost his vision. He lost his ability to speak, vomiting, the whole nine yards, rush him to the hospital, get him there. And they're like, he either has the aneurysm or he's having a stroke. And so I called and I was like, go get that handkerchief that we had from the week before. We need that here. 
and we just really started praying. I was there by myself for a very short time. It was very scary. And they got him out of getting the MRIs and laid him down, and I put that behind his neck. And the doctors did all sorts of tests. They're like, we know he had a stroke, but we can't find any indicators. We can't figure it out, but we know that he had one. And I know it was the power of prayer, and I know that the anointing on that handkerchief definitely played a part. And so it works. And he doesn't have any problems. He's served in the Army. He's healthy, healthy in his 20s. So praise the Lord. Amen. You heard it. I want to tell you a quick story before we finish here. Boy, this has been good today. Did you learn a little something? Did you wonder about all those things, handkerchiefs, shadows, Peter's shadow and all that? Well, maybe it's a little bit clearer now. It's God. It's all God, people. Anybody here has ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth? Anybody? Two people? You're kidding me. Are you kidding me? One, two, three. Mighty man of God with the Lord now. He writes in one of his journals, one of his books, a time where he, he was an evangelist. And uh, he was over in, uh, uh, he was having uh, some services in England. And back then, uh, the, the visiting pastor or evangelist would uh, be taken in, shown hospitality uh, with the family in the church, and they would give them the best place in the house that had seat at the table and also the, the be their bedroom. They didn't make him sleep on the couch. They gave him uh, the best room, so that's where he slept, in their bedroom, uh, day after day. Now, the older lady was a great woman of God, and her husband was a crankety old drinking guy who discounted the gospel and disliked Smith Wigglesworth. But he was in their house anyway. He, he abided by it, trying to stay away as much as possible. Well, on the last night, the woman says he didn't come again, Pastor. And uh, I was so hoping that he would be saved. Smith Wigglesworth says, I'm leaving, but this is what you do. Don't change the sheets. I've been sleeping in those sheets for three days. They're saturated with the anointing of God. This is in the book. And when and he left, of course, they took back their bedroom. And as he laid in that bed, night after night, after coming home in a rage and a fit, he began to weaken. He began to sweat. He began to, to be convicted by the Holy Spirit. And he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's in the book. You can say what you want to say and challenge all you want to challenge. But I'm telling you, the power of God is awesome and able to change lives. And two places in the Bible he chose to use his power in a mighty, mighty, unusual way. Peter's shadow, Paul's handkerchiefs. God is not a respecter of persons. That's why we have these handkerchiefs. I want to invite every minister in this church, first every pastor, and every minister in this church to come forward right now. If you're a minister in this church, you come forward right now. Let me help you up. And come forward. And I want you, I want you, everyone grab a vial of oil. And we're going to lay these out. We're going to lay these out. Okay. Everyone grab a, a, a anointing oil. Every minister up here. Amen and amen. Grab a oil, and each one of you begin to pour the oil over your area of handkerchiefs and lay hands on them. Because Acts 19 says that Paul, from the body of Paul, and other translations say that he laid hands on them, releasing the anointing of God, the power of God, the vir virtue of God that was in him into these handkerchiefs that everywhere they went, because Paul couldn't go everywhere, neither can I.
God used this as a vehicle to heal people. The handkerchief being laid on a person that is sick it was like Paul himself laying his hands on them. It was an extension of his hands as it is now with these hands being laid on it by these spirit-filled, anointed ministers of God. So, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you this morning, do you have a friend in need, sick, miserable, contemplating bad things, their mind distorted, their body is in pain? Do you have a family member that needs to be saved? needs to be healed. Maybe you yourself are suffering from some affliction. Why not? Why not believe God? His power. His presence. And come, take. And then not now. In a minute, we're going to pray over them as they continue to pray and lay hands and anoint these cloths. But I want to invite anyone here to come and take anointed handkerchief according to Acts 19 and either put it upon your person and pray for your healing or as if I was laying hands on you myself or take it to a friend I don't care if they live in New York mail it to them I'll give you the stamps get it to them somehow and tell them in a letter this was anointed by the ministers of my church it holds the power of Acts 19. Lay it upon you, your child, and experience the power, the healing, the beauty, the wonder, the love of Jesus. Everyone stand, please. Stretch your hands toward these ministers. Get ready to release your anointing. Lord, we pray. Acts 19, that from the body of Paul, from the hands of Paul came handkerchiefs and aprons so filled with the anointing and power. Wherever they laid them, people were healed and set free. I pray now that the collective anointing of this congregation, these precious ministers, being released, imparted into these handkerchiefs to be taken by precious people in need, know of others in need, and given to them, laid upon them, and prayers given, and power released. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, ministers, thank you very much. Go ahead and part. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Kyle, just stand on the side. Amen and amen. If you need a miracle, I challenge you to believe God with me right now. I dare you. I know this was a little hard and I raised my voice a few times, but you know something? We're in times where we've got we've to get right. We, we've got to learn the right things and discount the stupid things. help other people. Here you can come, sir. Take an anointed handkerchief and take it to somebody else. You know what that's going to show them? They're going to show them that you love Jesus, you believe the Word of God, and you've come now to feel the power of God in saying that to you right now. You lay it upon them. You take the boldness of saying, Lord, heal this person. Heal my mama. Heal my son, my friend. Deliver them. Save them. Set them free. In Jesus' name, may the power of the anointed cloth that I have brought to you be released. In Jesus' mighty name. That's all you do. If you would like to take one with you right now, whether it's for you personally or for someone else, get out of your chair and get up here right now. Get out of your chair and get up here right now. In the name of Jesus. According to Acts 19. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I said in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. If you need more than one for another, for another loved one, take two.
Take two. Shake it when you take it. In Jesus' name. There you go. Yes, there you go. Angie, Pastor Angie, we might need more. Grab some, please. Please, Terry, please. Four. Pronto, yes. Now, please. Stay right here. Here. Believe me, those are anointed. Here. 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 Four.